Hi everyone, welcome back. This is step three of solving the cube, and now we're at the stage where we're going to solve the middle layer. We've already solved the top layer. We're going to now work on those four edge cubies in the middle layer and get them in their proper spots. So our goal then is to take the puzzle which looks like this, fill in those four edge cubies, and get the first two layers solved. So how are we going to do that? Well, the key is to try to get pieces into their proper locations without destroying all the work we've done. I don't want to mess up that top layer. So how can I move pieces into their proper locations without messing up the top layer? Well, I'm going to temporarily mess up the top layer, but I'm always going to make sure I restore it when I'm done moving my sequences. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to find a piece that doesn't that isn't in its correct spot and put it in its correct spot. So the place I like to look first is in the bottom layer because I can look at the bottom layer and say, well, any piece that doesn't have green on it is not supposed to be in the bottom layer, so better be in the middle layer and therefore I'd have to move it. So I scan around and I see there's a piece that doesn't have green on it. This is not supposed to be in the bottom layer. It's supposed to be in the middle layer. And in fact, it's supposed to be right there, white orange. So this piece needs to go there. How do I get it there? Well, this is where we're going to have to come up with some special move sequences to do it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a move sequence that's known as a double Z commutator. So I'm going to use this sequence of moves called a Z commutator. I'm going to do it twice. So let's see. First of all, what is a Z commutator? Just so we know. Well, a Z commutator is a sequence of moves in which I pick two faces that share a common edge. So I'm going to use the right face here and the front face. They share that common edge. And what I'll do is I will move them as follows. I will do the front face in the clockwise direction, so that's known as the F move, and then the right face in the clockwise direction. That's an R move. So I did F, R. And now I'm going to do F inverse and R inverse. And if we look at the puzzle, there's only a few pieces that moved. And in fact, the pieces that moved are along here, which kind of looks like the letter Z. So this is called a Z commutator. It was an F, R, F inverse, R inverse. If I want to do that backwards, if I want to undo this, then I just have to make sure I do them in the reverse order. So I did an F, R, F inverse, R inverse. So I've got to do those backwards and invert them. So I'll do an R, an F, an R inverse, and an F inverse. And that restores them. So those are known as Z commutators, both of those. F, R, F inverse, R inverse or also RF, R inverse, F inverse. So let's see how those can be used then to do our edge placement on this puzzle. So it's not so important that we focus on the naming of these moves and we'll see that a commutator took four twists and we're gonna do two of them so this will be eight twists. But I want, it, I want you to get to the stage where this seems a lot more natural and you can see what's happening. So I'm going to try to explain the moves as I go along rather than just blindly twisting and, and saying, see, there it worked. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want that to go up there. Okay, so how am I going to send that up there? Well, I can't just send it up there. What I'd rather do is bring this corner piece down, match it next to that one first, and then bring them up as a pair. So how do I send that corner piece down and match it with this one? Well, I'd like that corner piece to go here. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to proceed as follows. I'm going to move this one out of the way. This is our down move. Then I'm going to do a left move. Then this is the commutator I'm working. I've done down, left. So now I need to do down inverse, left inverse. And that brought the corner piece down there and paired it up with that one. So now they're matched together. Now I need to take that pair and send them up here. So I do another commutator. I go another Z commutator. I do a down inverse. I do a front inverse. I do a down, and then I do a front. 
and that moved it into the right spot. Okay. Now these move sequences are written, if you're viewing this video on the page where um, I've embedded all the videos and then I've got the move sequences all listed, etc., then you can just look around this video and you'll see that the move sequence is listed there. So you have it for reference. And I'm not going to say the move sequence in terms of the face moves and their inverses anymore. I'm going to just talk about it in terms of the position of the piece I'm moving and where it is in relation to where I want to move it and how I'm moving those faces. So let's scan around and see if we can find another piece. So I'm scanning, scanning, scanning. There's in the bottom layer. That's supposed to be have a green sticker on it. None of them are green, so it's not in the right spot. What is it? It's white, red. So there's red. There's white. So it's got to go here. So what I'll do is I'll match the color that's on the side with the center piece. Now I've got two choices. I need to send this piece well, if it's going to have a red side on it, it either has to live there or there. The color on the other part of the edge piece determines which side it goes to. It's a white one, so it's got to match this white. So this piece has to go here. It's got to go to the left. It's got to go to the left of this center piece. So here's what I do. Again, I'm not going to refer to down or down inverses or lefts and left inverses. I'm just going to talk about it in this way. I'm going to take that piece. I want it to go to the left. So I'm going to get it out of the way first, move it way over here, so I can bring this corner piece down. Now I want to bring it back to where it was, that edge piece back to where it was, and then bring that corner piece, which is now over here because that, that down move moved it over here. Now bring that corner piece back, and now they're matched up. Now I need to bring that as a pair up here. So I move it over, bring that face down, that's like the elevator now that's got two slots in it. I load up my elevator with my two people and send them up. And so now that's in the right spot. So, you know, a nice analogy for this then is to try to take the piece that was here. And if you want to send it over here, well, you want it partnered up with this one. Do a bit of that elevator thing where you bring that person down, join them up with the the other person that wants to ride the elevator, make sure they're partnered up together before you bring them up using the other, ele other elevator. So let's see if we can do this for these last two edges. Okay, so what you'll notice in these last two edges is that this edge piece is the one that should go over here, and this edge piece is the one that should go over there. So I need to swap those two edge pieces. So how are we going to do this? Well, we could just send any one of these ones that's in the bottom into one of these locations. If I send one of, say this one, into that location, it'll send this piece downstairs to something in the bottom. And then I can now move it over and bring it over here and then send it into the right location. So we're going to send any piece in the bottom into this piece in order to get that one out of there. So we'll start with this one. So I want it to go to the left. So I'll move it out of the way, bring the elevator down, try to bring that person back to load onto the elevator. Oh, send the elevator up because I don't want to ride that elevator. I want to ride this elevator. So I've partnered them together. The corner piece I was here is now partnered. And then bring them up using the other elevator. And so that brought that piece here, which isn't the one that's supposed to go there. That one's supposed to go there, but that's fine. We wanted to get that piece that was here out. And now it's out. There it is right here. The yellow orange one. That one needs to go up here. So this one needs to go to the right. Orange is on the bottom. It needs to match that orange there. To send that to the right, I want to bring this corner piece down and partner them with this one, and then bring them up using the front elevator. So here's what we do. We take this piece, this edge piece, which needs to go to the right, move it out of the way. Bring that elevator down. This person now being out of the way comes back to get on the elevator. Oh, but the elevator leaves without them. That's fine because it brought the person I wanted to pair with them right next door. Now that they're paired up, I need to fill in that spot there. So the way we do this is get them out of the way, bring the elevator down, load them into the elevator, send them back up. And so now they're loaded up. Doing that brought the red yellow piece that was here into the bottom layer, which is now able to be put up into the right edge spot. So I want to send that one up here. So 
I want to send it to the right, so I move them out of the way, elevator down, move them across, elevator up. And then across, move that down, across, move it up. And now it's in the right spot, and we finished our middle layer. All right, so practice that move a few times, get used to it. There's two different directions to go in. The move sequence is listed next to the video here on the website, so you can have that for reference. Um, there is another move sequence that I like in order for placing those edges, and it's a move sequence that allows us to cycle three edge pieces around. It's one that we're going to be using in the last layer, and I like it a lot, but I didn't want to introduce it too early, but I will after we do the solve. I'll come back to this middle layer, and I'll show you how to use that edge three cycle that we'll learn for the last layer, how to use it here. So in some sense, what I'm saying is there was this move sequence that we've just learned to place those middle edges, but we do have other ones, and the other ones might seem a little bit more natural to use. The reason I wanted to show you the one I showed you in this video, though, is because it works wonderfully well to solve the Mega Minx. So we'd, we would do the same solution pattern on the Mega Minx. We'd start with one layer, we'd solve all of the edge pieces, in this case there's five of them, then we'd solve the corner pieces. And then once we do that, then we'd have edge pieces to solve here. There's five of them. To solve those edge pieces, the move sequence we just did here works perfectly on solving the edge pieces here. And so we would go step by step solving edge pieces, and then we'd solve some corner pieces, and then we'd solve some more edge pieces, and then some more corner pieces, and then some more edge pieces, and then we get down to the very last layer, where we would then need, uh, let's get twist the last layer, we'd get to that very last layer where we would then need special moves to solve the last layer. And the other thing that perhaps is worth mentioning now, the techniques we're going to use to solve the last layer here, they transfer perfectly well to solving the last layer on the Mega Minx. Once you have an understanding of how the moves work on this puzzle, you'll be able to transfer them to this puzzle. This is what I mean by minimal memorization. If you've ever tried to solve the Mega Minx before and looked online, you'll see that to get that last layer, there's lots of stuff that you have to remember. Lots of different configurations of those final pieces and how they look, and then try to memorize a move that does what you want it to do. Whereas if we come away solving this puzzle with the move sequences we're learning here, we can directly transfer them to this one, and you'll be able to solve this with very little, if not no, memorization at all. All right, so we're going to move on to next, the next step, which is step four, solving the corner pieces in the last layer.